Good morning, guys. I'm here with Liana, and we're in a little slice of paradise right now. We've just anchored the boat up. This beautiful island, in the next couple days, we're planning to explore all of these islands. Heaps of cool stuff around, so we got some awesome stuff planned. We're gonna camp. Yeah. Hopefully go spearing. There we go. And all that good stuff. I've never been here before, so today's gonna be a good bloody day, I can tell you that. We haven't even got to the mackerel spot yet, and I just got the drone up for a quick scene. You'd think it'd be easy. The prop got me, there's blood all over the boat. But we got the scene, it's looking beautiful. I didn't think I'd be bleeding this much already. It's gonna be a good couple days. Will that hurt? Have a look at this. We got to the island, have a look at this. It's so stunning, it kind of looks like Jurassic Park. The water's 30 meters here, and there's some awesome drop-offs and ledges and stuff, so we're gonna get the trolling rods in. I'm after the Spanish mackerel, and if you guys didn't know, today's February the 22nd. It's the day after the Spanish mackerel closure. So there's two periods of three weeks in February and March where they close fishing to Spanish mackerel to help the numbers. This came into effect in 2023 because the numbers were down by 17% or something. So it kind of gives the mackerel a rest, and today, we can start chasing mackerel again till the 1st of March. So we're gonna try and get a Spanish mackerel. Just one, that's all we need. I'm gonna troll around this island and then see what happens from there. Are you done yet? <laughs> when she's done weighing, we'll get them in and we'll get going. Do you wanna reel in the fish? I will, but not the first. Not the first one. Oh. We get more than one. The pressure's on because we need food. You can do it if you want, but... No, no. <laughs> I need food in my belly. Okay, food's more important, she reckons. Bit of bait here. Any minute now. Well, we've been trolling for a couple of hours here. We might move on, the Spanish aren't playing the game. There's Fair bit going on on the sounder, but they're just not taking the lures, so. Plenty more islands to check out. We'll pull these in and go troll up another spot and then see if we can go for a dive or something like that. If you guys have been watching long enough, you know the uh, the Spanish have been evading me for a long time, so. It's just that fish. It's just that fish I always struggle to catch. They're here, but they know I'm here, so. They've gone quiet. Living off the ocean looks a bit like this sometimes. Where are these Spanish? Been trolling this new spot a few times. There's two rocks here. Really nice, blue water. No Spanish, they've been evasive again. We're gonna have to save that for another day. We can't troll all day because I'm meeting up with a local Spiro. Met him at the server the other day and uh, he's got some spots around here that he's gonna take me out, have a dive together. See a little tinny on the beach up here and I think that's all mate from the servo. So we've got to link up with him and then hopefully uh, jump in the water and shoot some fish, eh? All right. First drop here and the viz is looking absolutely unreal. And over my right shoulder right there is a blue spotted ribbon tail ray. Super dangerous to humans, so you want to stay away from that fella. And this fish I'm dropping on here is a Morwong. You want to stay away from that one as well. That right there is the mother-in-law fish. So I hit bottom and I see some black spot tuskies. So I just slowly creep over towards them, see if I can get a shot in. They're a little bit spooked, but I got a bit of air. So I take my time here, just crawl along the bottom and, and see if one presents a shot. There's a bigger model that I'm sort of eyeing off. So bruise over towards him, line up a shot and I probably should have taken it right there, but I'm being a little bit fussy with the shots. So he swims away and I'm out of air. It's back up to the surface. All right, there's another beautiful spot here. Lee's already headed down. We're gonna have a look. You. This new spot here had heaps of bait, really nice bombies, so I reckon there could be some fish around for sure. And the second drop, there's a beautiful coral trout, so take my time, line up the shot, and completely miss it. Miss point blank. <laughs> Little coral trout. Nice work, Nick. 
showing the locals that you know how to miss a fish. Good stuff. Next shop, I find a stunning red emperor. They're a very sought after fish in this area, but this guy's a little bit small, so we gotta let him grow up to be nice and big. We'll come back for him next time. Ooh. Yo, oi, there's a red here. There's a red here. He looks small, eh? It's so cool to see him in shallow water. So this ledge here was holding a few black spot tuskies, but I couldn't get my gun around in time and spook these guys off. And I noticed over my shoulder a giant Queensland groper. This is a huge protected fish species here in Queensland, and they can get absolutely massive. He's just keeping his eye on me. I found this really nice ledge, and there was a good coral trout sitting there. So I line him up, but he's staring straight at me. I don't want to shish kebab him. So I wait for him to turn, trout are pretty dumb, so he comes back around, presents a broadside shot, and it lights out. That was a textbook shot, 10 out of 10 eating fish, super happy with that. What'd you get? Very well today. <laughs> Coral trout. Nice trouty. Beautiful bite trout. There we go. I'm gonna get him in the boat before the sharks go. You! Nick got a nice coral trout for dinner tonight. So we'll chuck him in the bag. In the bag. We've just set up camp. Awesome spots, looking absolutely beautiful. I think a family of five have just rocked up and they're setting up about 10 meters down the beach from us now. Usually I'd be all right with that, but we didn't drive eight hours north to be camping right next to someone. We want to slice this paradise all to ourselves. I mean, it's awesome that these guys are rocked up, family getting out and about, but I just, I love getting away from people, man, and they're a little too close. Look right behind me there, they're just snuck in on the low tide. So we're gonna have to wait for that tide to come back up. But we'll leave him this beach and we'll go to the other one, eh? <sighs> Wouldn't read about it. It's good while it lasted. <laughs> uh. Well, this spot's pretty magic as well. Just anchored the boat up. It's beautiful. We got camp set up. And if you have a little look behind me, it's a big storm brewing. I think it's coming this way, so. I think what we gotta do now is fill it up that fish, get it cooking, and then we might be hiding out in the swag for a big storm, who knows, but it's looking super dark. Ah! <laughs> oh, kick my toes. It's no big adventure without pain, that's for sure. Here's a beautiful trout we shot today, and I haven't found a rock this good in ages. This is like perfect height for filleting, so, we're gonna whack the fillets off this trout and I got some ingredients to whip up a green curry. What I like to do to make the filleting job easy, especially when you're not on a flat surface, is before you take off that first fillet, flip the fish around. And it's easier to cut the second slab off because the fish isn't sort of bent down. You still level it out so you can take this one off and then knock the other one off. So you pop that one off and then just flip it around take the other one off and that's sort of the easiest way I reckon and any bit of meat that I leave I have a sashimi that's beautiful we'll get the burner gone there's a little bit of wind it should be enough to get this cooking and we've cut up some basic ingredients snow peas cherry tomatoes mushrooms diced up that's half of our coral trout, so we still got half for brekkie in the morning. And what we're gonna be doing is a Thai green curry. If you watched my last video, I did the red curry on that uh, tinny mish, and 
Someone pointed out that I forgot the rice. I was in such a rush filming and I was wondering why it was so liquidy. I forgot to put the friggin' rice in. So we got two packs for safety this time. Just put a dash of oil in. That was <laughs> a lot more than a dash. We had the red curry last time, so we're gonna do the green curry. Put a generous amount of green curry in there. It's a little bit hot. Unfortunately, there's no coconut trees on this island, so. Store bought coconut milk here. Mix it up as we go. That's when you start to get that green color. Fish is going in. All right. Look at that. Yum. Our curry to extras ratio is not quite on point, but it'll work. A bit too many veggies. A bit too many veggies, but we got to fuel up. We had a Big day today, heaps of diving. Been up since like 4 a.m. So this is our first like, proper feed actually. Jesus, I haven't eaten all day. I can already see that trout just breaking apart. Beautiful white flesh. I do like these because they're like pre-cooked. Just pour them in to heat it up. I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit another packet in here, so that might have to do. We're both fanging this down because we're so hungry, but it's still a bit too hot. It's that good, but... <laughs> the tomatoes are ultra hot. <laughs> Squirts in your mouth. That's what she said. sunset dip and that's anchorage for tonight sky's just lit up right now it's so beautiful man what a spot Something in the water right here. And so sort of splash. Could be a big shark. Could be a turtle. The sun's coming up. Boat's nice and safe, thank God. And um, yeah, this is one of the coolest sunrises I've seen. Just in time. Completely glass off offshore. So today's gonna be a good bloody day, I can tell you that. Let's climb up a bit further. The weather's been getting better each and every day, and today is literally a complete glass off, fully offshore. In this bowl, I've just mixed up flour and I think Old Bay seasoning, had it in the camping box. So I'm gonna put these in and just mix them around. Whoops. I like the beach kitchen because you can be nice and messy. Put that up there. We're just gonna fry these with a little bit of oil, fuel up for this morning because we got a big adventure. Looks like they're ready. Coral trout cooks up so quickly, you don't want to overdo it. These will only need a, like barely a minute each side and they'll be cooked through. Oh yeah, some of these are cooking quick. Woo. There's our little brekkie, bit of salt and pepper. Yum. 
We have to smash this culture out real quick because we're going to go pick up a fellow YouTuber. See if you can guess who he is. We're going to go grab him now and he's going to try and help us get some redemption on the Spanish mackerel. I've wanted one real bad this trip and the lures were not a success yesterday. So he's grabbed some trolling rigs for dead baits and we're going to go pick him up and have another crack of the Spanish this morning. See what happens. We better get camp packed up and get back out there. Chato Spanish. We found him. He's on the beach. Let's go pick him up. Hey, Tim. How are ya? How good is that? <laughs> good to see you, man. Oh, jeez, man. Thank you. All right, we just picked up Rocky Kit, and uh, he's hopefully going to help us get a Spanish because it's been getting ridiculous. So we're going to head back to that spot that we're at this morning, and. Rod's rigged up these, so we'll get those gar in and um, see if we can get any luck. But looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, no, no. Well, hope, hopefully, I can uh, be coming through with uh, yep. this trolling thing. Because, um, yeah, it's usually, I usually have pretty good luck back home, so we'll yep. see. Let's see how we go. Smash these together this morning. <laughs> okay. But sometimes I'll run them upside down. With gar, it doesn't really matter because they hold together pretty good regardless. But uh, sometimes with pillies, it stops the bellies from blowing out. So just straight through there like that. And people would say that the darker colour creates a more contrast when they're looking up. Yeah, right. Um, you know, if you wanted to think that that is definitely playing for it. When I rig it up, I'll make it sure it's nice and loose like that. And then see wherever that's hanging. I just want to pin it in so it's hanging nice and loose. Don't pin it so it's tight. Because if you pin it tight, it'll stop it from swimming nice and loose and it could start spinning. Super loose. That's what she said. So gar are pretty good. They're pretty tough bait. And they'll hang together. So... Should be as simple as that, so he'll swim that way. It'll be interesting to see if we can actually pick up a fish using this over the lures. I think that might um, convince me to start using dead baits. Oh yeah, now look, see how his tail flicks. One bit, when we get to speed, as long as he's not spinning, that's key. Okay. But if he's pulling, see how he starts yeah, wobbling his back tail? Yeah, I see his tail It's hard to see it, because the rod's here. No, Maybe I see it. Yeah, that's swimming beautifully. Look at that. Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Okay, so if he's traveling like that at say 10 k's an hour, we'll be, we'll be okay. very happy. Yeah. Oh, we're laughing. All right. We were in fact not laughing. This is not the epic mackerel session I imagined. I thought I was really going to show you a good time here. All right, we just pulled the rods in. No luck. I can't believe it. <laughs> even, even getting rod on board to help out. Yeah. They're not biting, so. I'm yeah. feeling a bit disappointed about it. It's, it's yeah. yeah, we I'm can't. <laughs> it's a bit sad, but we do have dive gear. It's beautiful water here, so we're gonna jump in. See if we can get another trout or maybe a black spot tusky, something cool like that. Finish off this adventure, but nonetheless, it's absolutely unreal conditions out here. And we're gonna head to a new island we haven't checked out up here. Let's see if we can shoot something. Clearly, the Spanish mackerel, they're just not on, so. We've opted for the spearing again. This is a sick spot that Rod's taken us to. I haven't been to this island yet. So he's gonna work this uh, this back end here and I'm gonna swim up towards the uh, the surf up there and see if we can plug ourselves a trout, tusky, something like that. So, <laughs> see you there. So making my first drop down here, it's pretty evident that this place has been hit by some pretty bad coral bleaching. If you're not too sure what that is, when the water warms up too bad, coral will expel the algae living in their tissues, which causes the coral to turn completely white. It basically looks like a skeleton and it's really sad. Sometimes it can bounce back, but sometimes it just kills the coral completely. Rocky Kit spoke a bit more in depth about this situation over on his channel, so you can check that out if you want. I just hope that it can bounce back and be looking nice and lively again. There's some pretty cool creatures getting around. That was the hardest swim of my life. You went so far. I had a fit blow out. That current just ripped me around the corner and my fit broke and I could barely get back. So what happened was I just got to the edge of that corner there and it's a bar so the current's ripping and my whole fin just popped out of its socket. I actually never put the proper screws in that you're supposed to do like years ago, but I left it because it's been fine until now. The whole blade just came out, so as I'm kicking, 
It's just filtering water through here and the fin's not doing anything. Our luck this morning is not amazing. Hopefully Rocket's having a bit better luck than me right now. I think that's me done. So we're gonna wait here, see if Rocket can get a fish, but otherwise, that's probably gonna wrap up this adventure. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been epic to explore these islands. I'm definitely coming back here. It's been an awesome trip. We'll see you guys in the next adventure. Ew.